In the last 70 years, soldiering has come a long way. During World War II, only about 20% of American troops actually fired their weapons at the enemy during combat. The rest, faced with the prospect of killing, chose to deliberately miss their target or froze completely. Now, thanks to the introduction of psychological conditioning, silhouette targets and combat simulations, the modern coalition soldier in Afghanistan fires on their enemy almost 100% of the time. Having overcome human psychology, military scientists trying to perfect the modern soldier have turned to altering the human body, biologically and chemically, to achieve better results on the battlefield. We're at a turning point in history. For the first time in hundreds of thousands of years, our technologies are not so much aimed outward at modifying our environment in the fashion of fire, clothes, cities, agriculture, space travel. Instead, our technologies are increasingly aimed inward at modifying our minds, our memories, our metabolisms, our personalities, and our kids. We're beginning to change what it means to be human. In 2002, a project manager at DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency in the United States, explained, my measure of success is that the International Olympic Committee bans everything we do. To begin, they hope to increase alertness, cognitive power, and end the need to sleep. When it comes to cognition enhancement, there's a FDA-approved prescription drug called modafinil which allows helicopter pilots to fly in combat for 40 hours, and at the end of it, they will be as functional as somebody who is well-rested. The uh, British Defense uh, Ministry has purchased millions of doses of modafinil, presumably for distribution to their troops. Another drug could protect soldiers from the emotional toll of war. It turns out that propranolol also can be given as a preventive measure to reduce the chance that soldiers will get uh, PTSD. The concern is that this might also reduce their ability to make moral judgments. This year, DARPA will spend $4 million on Silent Talk, a mind-to-mind -mind communication system. Another focus are brain-computer interfaces. This technology has already filtered into consumer electronics, allowing users to control video games and remote vehicles. The military applications are obvious. An F-35 jet fighter is an extremely complicated machine to try to control with a joystick. So DARPA's thought is, how much better would it be if you could control this machine with your brain. Also being researched is the human digestive system to see if it's possible to create a soldier that could live off war zone foliage. It would be good to be able to eat grass and bark, wouldn't it? Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, carrying a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, rations with you. But long term, DARPA hopes to enhance the very building blocks of the human body, mitochondria, the power plants inside your cells, from muscle fibre to brain tissue. The human body is extremely inefficient. In principle, you should be able to run an Olympic sprint on one breath of air. You're talking about seriously enhanced human beings. The US Army Research Office believes mitochondria research could boost soldier physical and performance capabilities and expand the age range of suitable recruits. If it can pull that off, it might benefit all of us. The commercial market for a compound that could reverse the effects of aging would be more than significant. Wouldn't we want our medical researchers to take a drug that would make them more creative and give them a higher uh, uh, intellectual capacity? Wouldn't we want our emergency rescuers and firefighters to be as strong as they can be? And indeed, for the military, wouldn't we want our warfighters, our soldiers, to be as strong and as smart and as alert as they can be and to have the widest range of abilities in the most uh, uh, hostile environments that they'll encounter. Inevitably, human enhancement technology will come back into civilian society. LASIK eye surgery was created by DARPA and is now being used by athletes like Tiger Woods to get better than 2020 vision. So the ethical questions raised by these technologies are ones we will all have to face soon. Analysis and consideration of these ethical issues um, is really uh, uh, playing catch up to the uh, technologies themselves. These human enhancements, can they be reversed? 
yes or no. So it's one thing if you're taking a drug like an amphetamine or modafinil wears off in a while, but what if what we're doing to you is a more long-term or even permanent change? So imagine, you know, sitting down for the family dinner and, you know, the wife and kids are eating normal food and you're eating the daily newspaper. We can't wait for these technologies to be just dumped in our lap. What you have to do is start figuring out what we should do, not what, what we can do. It's what we should do that should be the conversation that we're all having, because this is coming at us real fast.